Today we're going to learn about a fun monkey, Curious George. Curious George goes to the zoo. Let's go enjoy together. Margaret and H.A. Ray's Curious George Goes to the Zoo. This is George. George is a good little monkey and always very curious. Today, George was feeling very excited. The man with the yellow hat was taking him to the zoo. As they drove, the man explained to George that this wasn't just any zoo that they were going to visit. It's called the Wild Animal Park, the man said. All of the animals roam around freely. When they arrived, George saw a huge banner. George looked up at it, but he could not read the words. A friendly zookeeper explained. It's an extra special day here at the Wild Animal Park, she said. It is our baby rhino's first birthday. We are going to have a party for her later on. A party? This was going to be a wonderful trip to the zoo. George tried to walk into the park where the animals were, but the zookeeper stopped him. You can't walk in there, she said. Hey. To explore this zoo, you have to ride in one of our special cars. She pointed to a huge car that had no roof on it. Oh my, what fun this was going to be. George and his friend climbed on board and the car drove into the park. It seemed to pause. Hold on, let's see what happened. I'll read it then. Soon they were in the midst of the wild animal park. Look over there, said the zookeeper. There's our pride of lions. We have a large family here. George pointed in the other direction. Yes, George, said the zookeeper. I see the giraffes too. Their tall necks help them eat leaves from the treetops. And there are two ostriches running this way. Do you see them? One, two. George was happy to be seeing so many amazing animals. What other animals do you see at this zoo? I see the giraffes. What are these animals with the stripes? Do you know? That's right, zebras. And there's the ostriches running. What about these two animals? One of them has big tusks. That's right, they're two elephants. How about this pride of animals up here on the hill? You got it, lions. There's one, two, three, four, five lions in that pride. Let's turn to the next page. The zoo car drove past a small pond. Pink flamingos waited in the water. Their heads bobbed up and down as they walked on spindly legs. The flamingos turn pink because they eat so many tiny pink shrimp, said the zookeeper. But George was not listening. Uh-oh, George. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Be a leader, George. Do you see the flamingos? How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's right, six flamingos. He had never seen flamingos before. He was curious about how those flamingos were moving. I wonder, there's the word curious. Do you think that's why they call him Curious George? Maybe. He leaned out the back of the zoo car as far as he could to take a look. But then, oh, what happened? What do you think's going to happen when he leans out? Make a prediction. Remember, a prediction is just a guess based on what you know. So based on what you know that's happening and in this story, what do you think is going to happen to George when he leans out of the back of the zoo car? 
I think you're right. He might fall out. Let's see if it's true. We were right. First, George lost his balance. Then he fell, kerplunk, right out of the zoo car. His friend hadn't noticed that he had fallen. George ran as quickly as a little monkey could towards the pond. The flamingos bobbed their heads and lifted their feet one at a time. It looked like they were dancing, so George danced with them. It looks like George is having fun, right? Look at this picture now. Remember how we said pictures tell as much as words? Look at George's monkey face. What word would you use to describe it? Yeah, scared or afraid. Run, George. Suddenly, the water in the pond started to move. What is this animal here? Yeah, a hippopotamus. Then a hippo popped its head out from under the water. What a surprise. George stopped dancing to take a look. The hippo opened its huge mouth as if it were yawning. George opened his mouth wide too. It was fun to act like a hippo. You better be scared, George. Hippos have big teeth, right? Let's turn the page. What other animals might George see? Let's think about what animals he's already seen. I remember he saw giraffes, and he saw elephants, and ostriches running, and zebras, and lions, and now flamingos, and a hippo. What animal might he see next? What other animals are there at the zoo? Hmm, did you guess that one? What animal is that? Rhino. That's right, it's a rhino. Just then, George noticed that something was rustling in the reeds near the pond. George was curious. He wanted to see what was there. In an instant, he jumped over to the reeds. He poked his head inside and saw a baby rhino. Oh, isn't it cute? How does George's face look now? If I was to give one word, I would say happy. The tiny rhino was cute, but she looked a little bit sad and a little bit lonely. Lonely, that was the word I chose for my monkey, remember? I wonder why the rhino is lonely. Do you think maybe he's missing his mom or dad or family? Let's find out. He jumped and bobbed his head and danced his feet up and down. George wanted to make that baby rhino feel happy again. He thought and thought. Maybe the baby rhino would like the flamingo dance. The baby rhino peeked her head out of the reeds so that she could watch. Hmm, peeked her head out of the reeds. I wonder what reeds are. Well, look at the rhino. Where did she peek her head out of? This tall green grass. Maybe reeds are tall green grass. Let's see if that makes sense. The baby rhino peeked her head out of the tall green grass. That makes sense, so that she could watch. George danced more, and the rhino walked out of the reeds. Remember, that must be the tall green grass. She was curious, too. Look at her face. Does she still look sad or lonely? She looks happier now. George is being a leader and filling her bucket. They were having so much fun that George didn't notice what was behind him. What is it behind him? I think it's a human. What do you think? Let's see. The zookeeper stomped over to George. She did not look happy. Uh-oh, George, look at her face. She looks a little mad, right, or angry. The man with the yellow hat was running behind her. You are a naughty little monkey, 
said the zookeeper. Hey, that's a compound word. Zoo is a word and a keeper. So a zookeeper must be someone who keeps the zoo. You were supposed to stay in the car. You and your friend will have to go now. George walked to the man's side. He waved goodbye to the baby rhino. The man and the zookeeper turned to see whom George was waving to. The baby rhino. Why, we've been looking for her all day, said the zookeeper. She got separated from her mother. That must be why she was lonely. Do you think she'll be reunited with her mom now? Look at the picture. Remember, a picture tells as much as words. We can see that she is. Let's read it. George was glad to see the zookeeper looking happy again. He and the man started walking towards the exit. The zookeeper ran to stop them. Thank you for finding our baby rhino, George. And just in time for her birthday party, will you join us for some cake? George jumped with glee. He had forgotten about the party, and he did love cake. Who else? I love cake, too. The man and George followed the zookeeper and the baby rhino back to zoo headquarters. The rhino's mother was waiting there for her. And you see, there's that other animal we saw, the giraffe. See how tall it is? Here's the end of our story. The zookeeper brought out a special birthday cake that was shaped like a rhino. George had never seen a cake like that before. You can have the first piece, George said the zookeeper. I also have a special treat just for you. She placed a bunch of bananas in front of him. George was very happy to have a tasty banana, but he saved room for some cake too. Way to put first things first, George. Bananas are good, but make sure you have room for cake. So you just read a great story about Curious George. Now it's time to do your final read and respond of the year. Turn to your next open page right after our monkey that you drew yesterday. That was hard, but I'm so proud of you for doing your best. I want to see how many animals you can remember that George saw at the zoo. So we're going to say at the zoo at, and remember a capital letter, the zoo, George, and since it's his name, make sure it has a capital letter as well. And George is spelled G-E-O-R-G-E. -E. Notice the G is the soft G both times, making the sound of J, not G. At the zoo, George saw. Now, whenever you list more than two things, you must separate it by commas. Let's see if you can do that and get ready for second grade. So, at the zoo, George saw mm, comma, mm, comma, and how many you can remember? Mm, comma, mm comma, mm, comma, let me see. Mm, comma, and mm. How many can you remember? Maybe you can't remember them all, but what you can remember, separate by commas for each one. Remember, you can only use the word and once to separate the last two. Let's see how you do. And then do your best to draw a picture of those animals at the zoo. It's a hard one for your final project, right? But you're getting ready for second grade. And I believe in you, firsties. I know you can do it. 
See you in the morning. Bye.